Hey again, let's look at dot plots this time. Um, so this might be a new graph for some of you, but it's actually a pretty quick graph to make. We'll see in a second. Um, but a dot plot is a simple graph used to show the location of all the data values. Um, dot plots can be useful for finding the relative position. So relative to the other pieces of data, um, and they can make it easy to spot gaps and clusters. So I created one for you and then we'll make one on our own. So if we were to construct a dot plot of exam scores on a stats test, um, this is our dot plot. Um, you'll notice we don't have a vertical scale. What's nice is we only have horizontal scale. So that can save us some, some time. Um, so no vertical scale, which saves us a lot of trouble, right? There's nothing going up and down. I am struggling scale, All right? Nothing up and down. Instead of having a scale, we just use dots instead. So let's look at some of these. So 88, so 88, we just put a dot at 88. Um, let's look at 89. So when a number shows up twice, we just stack it. So 89 would be those two. So hopefully this makes sense. We'll make one from scratch. 96 also shows up twice, I think, yeah. And so that's why we have two stacked at 96. So we just use dots to show the vertical scale um, rather than labeling a vertical scale. So when two points lie in the same place or extremely close, we just stack them. And so this is what we're doing instead of a vertical scale. Someone can just simply count the dots. So let's actually make one. Um, so maybe in a class, algebra class students were assigned a practice final. And I just recorded how many times they tried the practice final. So someone tried it zero times, someone took it three times, someone else is our very dedicated student and took it nine times. We're gonna turn this into a dot plot. So we just make a horizontal scale. Um, if we only have to go to nine, so I'm just gonna go zero through nine. Um, if my numbers were more sp spread out, I might find a scale. Um, you don't even have to start at zero for dot plots, which is nice. But it, was, it makes sense to start at zero here. And what's also nice about a dot plot is I can just kind of go in order. Um, so zero, I put a dot at zero. Four, right? With the frequency tables, we were kind of counting them beforehand, but we can kind of just go in order. Add a dot. Three, add a dot, right? One, five. Try to make your dots close to the same size. And then when I hit four again, I just stack it. So it makes it nice. So two, we get two more fours, five and a four, three, Right. If you're feeling confident, pause and do this without me. Two more fours, two, two fives. We get a nine, three, five, four, and three. And we get something like this. Uh, six, seven, and eight, even though they're empty, they need to be there. So we don't jump from five to nine, that would be misleading. Um, we're going to label number of attempts. We want to make sure when we look at the graph, we know what it's measuring. And I think we can see really quickly that most students are kind of in the four to five range, three, four, five. And the person who took it nine times is maybe an outlier. Um, we'll talk about outlier later, but there's a big gap between five and nine. And that's a dot plot. I think it's... I kind of, I really like dot plots because I think they're so much faster to make than histograms and you can kind of still see the same patterns. Yeah, when we're using stack crunch, we can make them all really quickly, which is nice. Um, so let's just do one more example for section two, two. Um, so I keep talking about things that are misleading. So let's go more into that misleading. I've mentioned that a couple times. 
So misleading graphs are when we make graphs, um, when we make graphs, we wanna make sure that we make them in such a way that they do not mislead the reader. And we also don't wanna let other people mislead them. Um, so if you look on the internet, you can find so many bad graphs that are really, really, really misleading. Um, so this one below is actually called a misleading graph. Um, so let's figure out why. So we're looking at the top 20 countries in the 2010 Olympics um, in Vancouver. And so we have the country and we have the medal count. So medal count would be like frequency, right? Number of wins. Um, so let's just look really quickly and we're gonna compare South Korea, which is this one, to China, which is this one. So I'm not gonna look at the scale. If I look really quickly, South Korea looks like it's about three times as big, right? If I were to take China, oops, I wanted to copy it. There we go, copy, paste, paste, right? Right, it looks like it's about three times as big. So South Korea appears to have three times as many medals. Right. When we look at a graph, we want to look really quickly. It looks like three times, right? It also looks like if I look at Austria compared to Norway, right, Norway looks twice as big, right? Those are things we want to be able to notice really fast. But if we actually look at the count, that's not true. So let's look. So looking at the scale, the actual ratio, ratio just means South Korea divided by China. That's what a ratio is. It's a fraction. So part A, we think the ratio is three because we think Korea is three times as big. But then if we go and look, South Korea has maybe 14 medals and China has 11, slightly over 10. And so we thought it should be three times as much, but 14 is not three times 11. It's actually only 1.27 times. So South Korea is not three times has three times more than China. It only has 1.27 times more. Um, and so the mistake is that they started at 10 and not zero. So when we're doing these vertical frequencies um, to avoid misleading graphs, we need to make sure we have a consistent scale. That's one thing. So sometimes someone might 5, 10, 15, 20 is consistent. Um, 1, 2, 4, 7 is not consistent, right? We need to count by the same number for our entire axis. And if they do touch the axis, we need to make sure they start at zero. So for the vertical scale. By not starting at zero, we made South Korea look a lot bigger than China, and that was misleading to the reader. Um, we want someone to look at our graphs and immediately be able to make conclusions. The whole point of a graph is so someone doesn't have to read the fine print and they can make fast conclusions. Um, so maybe now that we've talked about this, you'll notice some misleading graphs on like Instagram all the time. Let me know if you have any questions.